Today I'm going to be reviewing the most expensive air purifier in the Lavoie range, this Lavoie Everest Air. Now I first heard about this device from a reader of House Fresh, our website back in October 2022. And they asked me to review this device, but it's $499.99. So it took me a little while to get the funds together, but eventually I bought this device for reviewing and testing. Now, if you don't want to watch my full review of this device, here are the five things I really like and the five things I don't. The first one is, I just love the look of it. I think it's really aesthetically pleasing. It's as if Apple made an air purifier, this is what it might look like. Second, performance itself. According to the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers, as a dust cadre of 365 CFM. And when we test it in our test room, when we test all of our air purifiers, it removed all PM1 pollutants in just 14 minutes, which is at the top of the table of all the devices we've tested. It also doesn't use too much energy considering its air cleaning power. It only pulled 69.8 watts at its highest turbo fan speed. And because it has a lot of air cleaning power, you can run this device at a lower fan speed. So we tested running this at its lowest fan speed and it still managed to clean all PM1 pollutants in just 25 minutes, which is the same as the IQ Air Health Pro Plus, which costs $900. The final thing I really like is the removable pre-filter. Now, being able to clean this filter regularly really improves the performance of the device. So anything that can make that easier is a big win for me. Now, the things I don't like. The first one is the fact that the carbon filter is actually integrated with the particle filter. So that means that if the carbon filter is used up, you have to throw the whole filter away, which is far from ideal. There is also the whole issue of the term HEPA. Dyson made a complaint to the Better Business Bureau. I'll go into more detail later, but it isn't a great look for Lavoie to be using lies in their marketing. You also have to pay for the design of this device. Now it performs as well or on par with the Lavoie Core 600, but you do pay a lot more. So just something to be aware of that it isn't probably the best bang for your buck. Now the wheels on the device are integrated in the bottom of the base, which look good, but in day-to-day -day practice isn't great. And it'd be better to see something like caster wheels just to move it around more easily. These just go in one direction. And there is also the issue with carrying it. So it has one uh, carry handle at the back. And unless you're like super strong in one arm, you're going to find it harder. So it would have been better to see Lavoie put uh, carry handles on both sides. But again, I think they've chosen that so it looks better. But something that in day-to-day -day practice wasn't great. Okay, let's jump into the full review. As I said, as the main reason I really like this device, it's all about the design. Now, this was the main feature that I really liked about the Lavoie Everest Air, and I have to say, I really do like it. It's clear to me that Lavoie has prioritized design with this device. Now, most large air purifiers, they really put function over form, so you end up with devices like the Lavoie Core 600S. Someone online described it like a white, large white nappy bin, and it's very apt. You also have the IQ Air Health Pro Plus, which my wife described as a 90s photocopier. So I know this doesn't matter to everyone, but it's good. Many consumers do want a device that performs well, but also looks good in the home. And I feel like Lavoie has really knocked out the part with this device. You have a really nice silver surround on the side. It looks metallic, but it is it's plastic. Uh, and then the, even the front cover, the, 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 the cover to the device, even just the choice of the logo at the top and uh, the holes themselves, I just think it looks great. Uh, obviously doesn't get in the way of the device working. And then on the top, they use black, where these fans, you can actually change the angle of them. Uh, and then the, the screen itself has a kind of glossy uh, black finish. It isn't glass, but it, I think it's plastic, but it definitely looks like glass. Uh, and then on the control panel itself, there is a screen that tells you how, how good the air quality is in the room that it's situated. And that all comes from this sensor at the side, the AirSight Plus. So this will be detecting the air, making sure, it, and then reporting that back to the main control panel and to the V-Sync app. And the V-Sync app itself is, is not a bad app. Uh, I've tested many different apps for many different air purifiers, and I usually have problems connecting devices and different things like that, connecting to Wi-Fi. I've never had an issue with the Lavoie devices. Um, they work, they have all the functions that you need. They, you can connect multiple different Lavoie devices in the same app. The only minor issue that I have is that they have a big block at the top that tries to sell you other Lavoie devices. So I wish they wouldn't have that. I prefer Dyson over that. But from a smart functionality, 
this has everything you need. One of the things I appreciate about Lavoie is that they send all of their devices to the Association of Home Appliance Manufacturers for a KDAR test. The KDAR test, which is short for Clean Air Delivery Rate, is basically the gold standard in air purifying testing. They look at how well a device removes pollen, smoke and dust. And the Lavoie Everest Air has some great scores. It has a smoke KDAR of 363 CFM, dust KDAR of 365 CFM, and pollen KDAR of 428 CFM. Now, based on these results, the Lavoie Everest Air can be used in rooms up to 563 square feet, which is much higher than the average popular air purifiers, which usually max out at around 350 square feet. Now, KDAR is useful for identifying air purifiers that you should look at for testing, but we always want to test the devices for ourselves because we know there can be errors with data, mistakes made, and we want to know exactly how well this device can remove particulates from the room. So keep watching to see our performance test later on. When we first bought this device, it was marketed to us as having true HEPA grade filters. You can even see the filter itself and it has Everest Air True HEPA. But sadly, if you go on the Lavoit website as of today when I'm putting this video together and search Control F for HEPA, you won't find any mention of HEPA on there. And that's because Dyson made a complaint to the Better Business Bureau at the end of last year complaining about Lavoit's use of the term HEPA, basically suggesting that they weren't HEPA. In response, Lavoit started to remove the term HEPA from some of their units. So first they removed them from their core series units, but as of today, they removed them from all of the devices, even the Lavoit Vital 100, 200, that was last week, and even the Lavoit Everest Air. Now, this could be, this is concerning because Lavoit shouldn't be lying about the term HEPA just to sell more air purifiers. But it isn't, doesn't mean that these devices are terrible air cleaners. They are all the AHAM KDAR tests back up that they are good performers at removing dust, pollen, and smoke. Our own in-house testing proves that. And even the DIY air purifiers like the Corsi Rosenhold box or the New Kit Tempest that we've tested, they all use non-HEPA grade filters, but they're really effective at removing particles from the air. Now, there's a really good uh, Twitter X thread from David Elstrom that goes into a lot of detail on this. There's also a great video on here. I'm going to drop it in the comments that it's all about why HEPA is basically used by the manufacturers to sell you air purifiers, but it's not required. And actually, many air purifiers that don't use HEPA grade, such as these Lavoit devices, can actually perform quicker at removing particles from the air. So don't be put off by this. I know it's not great for a manufacturer to say something that is later proven to be untrue. And I wish that Lavoit would come out with a statement or explain it in some way. But these devices are really good. So don't ignore them just because they're not HEPA. But yeah, it's not a great thing. Now, one of the downsides I mentioned about this device is the fact that the carbon and the particle filter are all one device. So what it means is that if the, the carbon filter actually becomes used up, which is often happens around six months, depends on your situation, but if there's a lot of odors, then the carbon just becomes full with all of these gases and odors and no longer works. Usually you'll identify that because you, maybe the smells that had gone away when you start the air purifier have started to come back, which that's a good sign that your carbon needs replacing. And the problem with the design that HEPA's chosen, it means that the whole thing has to be thrown away, which considering that the HEPA is, you know, you could probably get six, 12 months even more on it. It's just a real shame. You're gonna end up with lots more filters uh, in, that are wasted. Uh, and they're also gonna to add to your, the price that you're paying. Now there's manufacturers like Coway, Winex, Air Doctor, and they've fixed this by doing the simple thing of just removing the particle filter from the carbon filter. So when you wanna change the carbon filter, you just change the carbon filter and you can leave the particle filter in place until that needs changing. So for future iterations, if you're listening, just, just swap out, have the carbon as replaceable. It's likely gonna be, be able to replace more and it will reduce people's running costs and make less waste, right? Now the carbon filter itself is actually, you get a pretty significant amount of carbon as you can see, um, and, it's, and it's pelleted carbon. So it's not the impregnated fabric that we see in some cheaper devices. So it, it will do a good job of removing gas and odors. It's not a massive amount like you have in the IQ Air Health Pro Plus or the Austin Healthmate, but it's still, considering the, the device itself, you do get a fairly large amount of carbon. Now, unlike the core series, there isn't, uh, multiple options when you go to change the filter. So with the core series, they have the toxic, the smoke, the pet. 
with the Lavoie Everest Air, you just have the standard filter, which is fine. Uh, we don't need lots of options, right? But it means that this is the filter that you will get each time. Another comparison to the Lavoie Core series is the removable pre-filter. So with the Lavoie Core series, you have a pre-filter that is attached to the HEPA filter. So when you go to clean it, the only really way to do it if it's still in the device is to get on your hands and knees with a vacuum cleaner and clean it like that, or you have to take the entire filter out, which is a bit of a pain. In comparison, similar to the Lavoie Vital 100 and 200S, the, the filter, the pre-filter here is removable. I mentioned this at the start, but you do need to be cleaning this pre-filter fairly regularly, at least every two to three months. But if it's got a lot of dirt on it, it's really gonna be affecting the performance of the entire device. Now we've tested the device with a dirty pre-filter and with a clean filter, and it's, it's drastic. It's in, even with the Core 300, it adds an additional 10 minutes to remove the PM1 pollutants. So anything that you can do that makes it easier to remove this, um, to remove this and clean it that's easier than getting on your hands and knees or removing the entire filter is a good sign. And it's actually one of the, the big plus points of this device over the core series. Let's jump into the performance test. As with all the reviews we do here at HouseFresh, we tested the Lavoie Everest Air in the same room that we test all of our air purifiers. Because we're comparing devices doing the same job in the same room, we can quickly compare performance across brands and across units very easily. Now this year, we've actually upgraded our testing process to videotape the actual test, and also we introduced a new Purple Air Zen sensor, which is a little bit more accurate than the Purple Air indoor sensor that we use as well. With our PA1 indoor sensor, it managed to clean it of PM1 pollutants in just 14 minutes. And with our new Purple Air Zen sensor, it was 16 minutes. Now this compares really well with other devices we've tested and many of them that will use ionization technology. Let's have a look. So the Air Doctor 3000, which is over $500, took 14 minutes. The Smart Blast Mini, a really large device from Smart Air, costing $649, took 12 minutes. The Lavoit Core 600S that we talked about uh, at $300 took 15 minutes. The Blue Air Blue Pure 211 Plus, which does use ionization with no way to disable, took 18 minutes. So it compares really well. Now, one of the big benefits of a large air purifier like this is because it has that extra air cleaning performance, you can actually run the device at lower fan speeds and still be able to keep a large to medium sized room clean. Now this brings us neatly to our next test, the sound test. Now the second most important thing when looking for an air purifier is the amount of sound that's generated. There's no point with a device being able to clean lots of air if it makes the noise of a jet engine. So that's why we test all of the air purifiers we review here at three feet away with a sound meter. We wanna look at each fan speed to see the level of sound generated. Now, since this year, we've been filming this experiment so you can see for yourself. Now at sleep mode, it was 35.9 decibels. At, at speed one, it was 39.1 decibels. Speed 2, 43.2 decibels. Speed 3, 48.6 decibels. And at the turbo high speed, it hit 57.8 decibels. Now, comparing to other similar powered devices, the Everest compares pretty well. With the Air Doctor 3000, that hits a maximum of 63.6 decibels. The Smart Blast Mini, 56.3. The Lavoie Core 600S, 61.4 decibels. The Blue Air Blue Pure 211, which has ionization that can't be disabled, 55.7 decibels. So comparing to other large devices, this Lavoie Everest Air is actually one of the lower uh, sound generators of the devices that we've tested that still have a high level of air cleaning power. Now, as I mentioned before, we also tested this device at its lowest fan speed. So looking at speed one at 39.1 decibels, it was still able to clean our room in 25 minutes. So for those people who have maybe a smaller space than 563 square feet, and they wanna use it in a smaller space, a great way if you've got the money to buy a device like this is just to have a device like this running basically close to silent, but still able to give you enough clean air changes every hour that's gonna keep all the particles and any issues from your air. Now we get onto long-term costs. Now all mechanical filtration, whether it's HEPA or non-HEPA grade filter or activated carbon, eventually they will need replacing. Over time, they become full of the particles and gases and odors and become so full, they actually become ineffective. So it, many manufacturers will recommend changing the filters 
up to every six months for smaller devices, but usually it's more like 12 months with larger devices. According to Lavoie, for the Lavoie Everest Air, they recommend between 12 and 15 months. Now, I could imagine that the particle filter could last up to 15 months, but I'm sure the carbon filter will need replacing more often, so I'm going to use 12 months for the calculation. Now, for OEM filters, you're going to be paying $99.99 for one filter, and you'll only need one for the year, so that brings the cost to $99.99. But looking at Amazon now, there's quite a few generic filters that are available between $37 and $45. So that really brings the yearly cost down, and the fact that Lavoit now has removed the term HEPA from its marketing makes me think there's no real downside to going with the generic filters with this option. We've tested devices with OEM and generic filters, and I'll be honest, the performance has been the same. So I, I would expect the same. Now, we will test this Lavoit Everest Air with generic filters when we need it to be replaced, but I don't see any real risk of going over generic to save yourself uh, some money. The other thing that you have to consider with long-term running costs for an air purifier is the amount of energy it uses. So if an air purifier is really inefficient, then it's going to use a ton of energy because air purifiers, especially if you're dealing with something like uh, hay fever or pollen, you want to keep them running continuously. So you, the energy costs can quickly add up, which is why when we review all of our air purifiers at House Fresh, we test using an energy meter how much energy is used at each fan speed. Now, re the results for the Lavoie Everest are, are as follows. For standby, it's 1.26 watts. Sleep mode, 4.87 watts. Speed 1, 9.85 watts. Speed 2, 15.59 watts. Speed 3, 26.6 watts. And turbo speed, it's 69.8 watts. So assuming that you use this device on its highest turbo speed, it's going to add to the average American household an additional $73.37 on your yearly bill. So yearly costs, if you go for the OEM filters, is going to be $173.36. But if you go down the route of the generic filters, you can bring that down to $113.37, which is really fair for a large air purifier like this. And if we look at the running costs against other similar devices, we, it, it, it does look good for the Lavoie. So with the Air Doctor 3000, you're looking at running costs with OEM filters of $236.43, the Smart Blast Mini, $277.70. The Lavoit Core 600S, the budget alternative to this, $167.28. And the Blue Air Blue Pure, $117.50. Overall, the Lavoit Everest has really fair running costs considering you get an aesthetically pleasing device with really high levels of air cleaning performance. So what do I think of this device, the Lavoit Everest Air? Well, Lavoie has managed to create a premium looking device that still cleans as well as many of the best devices we have tested. Yes, it's got a higher initial cost to a budget-friendly device like, say, the Lavoie Core 600S, but it has some features that I think make it stand out, one of them being that you have a removable pre-filter, and also it doesn't look like a large white nappy bin. Now, this device is likely not right for you if you're looking for the best bang for your buck, but I know there's consumers out there that are happy to pay more for a device that looks good in the home. And these are the same consumers that will look at devices like the Dyson, which look good, have great apps, really slick marketing, but the problem with the Dyson devices is that they're just usually just very terrible air purifiers. Their performance is often the same as budget devices, even though they cost eight, nine hundred dollars. Whereas the Lavoie Everest Air, yes, it's got the five hundred dollar price tag, but it also has the air cleaning performance to match that. So if you are looking for an air purifier for a large space and you're happy to pay that higher initial cost, then this is a device that I seriously think you can consider. Before I finish this review, I have a favor to ask. At the start of this year in March, Google absolutely decimated our website, housefresh.com. So hardly anyone is coming across our reviews anymore. And that's why we're putting so much effort into YouTube. And it's a real shame because I think as you can tell from this video, we've put a lot of time and effort and money into testing lots of devices. We've tested 72 devices and really taking care to do a real good job. And the problem is, is that most reviews on here, sadly, on YouTube and on the web in general, are nothing more than just paid reviews. They're designed in such a way to get you to buy that product straight away so you give a commission to the creator or the website selling it to you. Now, at House Fresh, I think you can tell we really do care about the testing process. And we're not the only ones. Our Tings do a great job, Tech Gear Lab, uh, Consumer Reports, which in the UK, and there might be others, but 
the vast majority of the websites and YouTube channels are out there, there's no testing going on. And it's really sad because it means that when savvy consumers are looking for devices, they're going to be tricked by these reviews thinking that they're good. They end up with devices that are overpriced and overhyped. Now at Housefresh, we try to make effort to highlight some of these devices. So we've done a video on the Puro Air HEPA 14 and the Rainbow Rainmate to show as many people that these devices are not good and should be avoided. And we're really trying to fight a battle against the wider internet, but we can do it if you help us. And one of the ways you can help us is by using the links in our description. So all of these links are affiliate links, and it just means that we will get a small percentage cut of the overall price. There's no added extra cost. Now, if you don't want to use Amazon for whatever reason or don't want to buy a product, that's absolutely fine. You can also help us by liking videos like this, subscribing to our channel, sharing uh, all of our, our YouTube channel with friends and family who look into the devices, or even just buying us a coffee on our website. Anything you can do to help is super appreciated. It means we'll have more funds to do more reviews and investigate more dud devices that more people need to know about. Okay, that's my ask over. If you have any questions about the Lavoie Everest Air, as always, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.